All right, good morning. Hope everybody's doing well and you had a good weekend, holiday weekend and stuff. So we are going to be um, introducing the module 10 lesson one, just getting the notebook set up and then we'll work on the majority of it tomorrow, the course arc, the notebook. I have a cahoots, we'll review for the quiz. Um, and then the second half of the period, um, I will give you time to work on EverFi, okay? Because you had two things due yesterday. You had the investment game and keys to investing. So give you a little bit of time on that. If you're having a hard time with your screenshots, then we can talk about that um, and just make sure that we're staying on top of that, okay? And then we'll continue with state and local government tomorrow. So let's get started. All right, for our bell ringer, today is National Walk on the Wild Side Day. So what is something you have been wanting to do or haven't had the guts to do. I've heard some good stuff today. All kinds of like piercings and tattoos, hair colors, skydiving, roller coasters. I've heard a whole bunch of stuff. You wore, pan you wore pants 100 degree weather. It's too hot, right? Yeah, it's hot. So what is something, ride a mechanical bull. Ooh, I've never done that either. I feel like I get thrown off really fast. I, I The only place I know you can do that is uh, is it like Stonies? I think I know they have one, but you have to be, I think, 21. Are there any mechanical bulls? I don't know. That one might have to wait till you're 21. I'm not sure where there's an under. Go to a haunted house. Have you done the, um, what's the circus circus? Don't they do like a big scary thing at Halloween? You're a few years behind. Like, they don't do the Fright Dome anymore. Oh, they don't? Okay. They don't. All right. Not anymore. All right. Where can we find haunted houses, folks? Hold a Cuban crocodile. What? Ricardo. <laughs> I don't even want to touch a crocodile. <laughs> You're awesome. Hike a Fulbright Angle Trail. I have heard those are so gorgeous. Yes. So gorgeous in there. Make sure you got really good hiking shoes and lots of water. <laughs> Go on a trail ride. Well, hopefully this summer, do it soon, right? Before it gets too hot. <laughs> Maybe one of these weekends. Yeah, finally getting nice. Pack mule. That sounds very uncomfortable. <laughs> No, it's all right. We're just getting started. We're just doing our um, our um, bell ringer with something you've been wanting to do but haven't done. So all kinds of stuff. Haunted house. I I know it's not haunted, but have you ever done the what's where's those corn mazes? You guys know what I'm talking about? They're out of town, like thirty minutes. Um, what's that place called? And they have corn mazes every fall. That might be kind of scary if you go in the evening. Where are the corn mazes? You guys know what I'm talking about? Let me look it up really quick. Now I'm going to wonder. Um, let's see. Corn maze in Las Vegas. Like out of town. Oh, Moapa Valley. That's what it is. Moapa Valley. Yes. So maybe... Tyreek, try in the fall, try Moapa Valley. They have like a corn maze and maybe go like in the evening. That might be kind of scary. I did one in college and it was very scary. Like at night, they even had like people dressed up and like with, with, uh, uh, what do you call them? Oh my gosh. I can't remember anything today. <laughs> chainsaws, chainsaws. They didn't actually have them, but to scare you and stuff like that scared the bejesus out of me. So I went running out of the corn maze. <laughs> So anybody else, anything? All right. Well, I encourage you, whatever's on your list, try to make it happen, right? You know, always setting goals. And now as you get closer to graduating, turning 18 and all those kinds of things, um, you know, more options um, at your disposal. All right. We're going to focus again, like second half of the period. I've had a bunch of people say that, that, that because of their parents, they're like, you know, I've heard that with like tattoos, hair piercing and some other things. Yeah. They're like, I want to do this, this, but while living at home, that might be a little bit. And that's fair. I mean, it's, it's kind of that balance, right? You know, you're becoming adults, but if you are living under your parents' roof, then, you know, they do, they do get a say, you know, once you're out on your own, you get more autonomy and stuff like that. I would recommend this though. I would say 
um, you know, do it slowly. So if you're going to do tattoos or piercing, things like that, like do one thing at a time and anything that you do that might be permanent, you know, think, how am I going to feel about this in 20 years? Or also think about jobs that you're going to have, you know, um, is this going to, it, a lot of jobs are cool with piercings, tattoos, things like that. Or do I maybe need to think about this or make sure that I can work this with whatever profession that I'm doing? So if you're doing something permanent, do keep those things in mind um, and stuff. So, okay, we're going to work on, um, we're going to work on the EverFi investment game and keys to investing. We'll do that second half. I want to get the notebook um, started. So like I said, we're going to jump around a little bit today. So I apologize, but just kind of lots of miscellaneous stuff. But first, we're going to focus on, I want to bring your attention to, um, if you go into Canvas, okay, so go ahead and get your Canvas open. We'll go into our class on um, registering to vote and select services, all right? So I'm going to go to modules, and I'm going to scroll to... Module 10. Module 10. Oh, why is 7 open? So you know you can collapse these as you go, and it helps you get to the module you're on a little bit faster. So once you're at Module 10, it says Local State Government, okay? At the bottom of that, there's these two tabs, Register to Vote and Select Services. So let's go over Register to Vote first. So as you're turning 18, a lot of you already are 18, or you'll be turning 18 here really soon, I want to go over what are the requirements to register and how you could do it. And you could do it online, okay? You can do it in person, but you can do it online. And you don't wanna wait till the next major election, okay? There are often a lot of local or small elections that happen. Um, you feel so old. Well, if this is, today is the fun side of adulting, all right? Some of the things that we have to do as adults and not all of them are super fun. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yay, okay. A lot of things are fun when you're an adult, but there are responsibilities and things we have to do, right? So um, I wanted to show you that you can register online, okay? So on this page, you're going to click, you can go to this website right here. And once you're on this website, it doesn't take you very long, probably 10 minutes, if that, less than that, okay, to register to vote. So, but there are some requirements. So you want to make sure that you have these things in line or have considered these things before you go to vote so that, or you go to register to vote so you're not surprised. Okay, so first and foremost, you have to be honest, okay? So any sort of misinformation, registering for someone else, not representing yourself, um, you know, correctly, um, that is a felony, all right? So you can be fined, you can get years in prison. So you don't want to falsify this. You want to be accurate and true. Okay, then it goes over the requirements. So you must be a U.S. citizen. You must be at least 17 if you want to pre-register. So if you want to pre-register um, because you know you're going to be 18 in the next uh, six months um, or if you already are 18, all right? And it has to be before whatever the upcoming election is, all right? So if you're 17 but you're going to be turning 18 here pretty soon, you could pre-register um, or if you're 18, then, then you would meet that age requirement. Now, in order to register in the state of Nevada in Clark County, you have to have lived in Clark County for 30 days. So they want to make sure that people aren't just jumping around from state to state trying to vote everywhere. All right. So you have to have resided within the county for 30 days. So if I were to move to Utah, I'd have to live there for a month before I could register to vote. OK, if it was election season or something like that. Um, OK, um, and then you must have continuously resided at a residence for 10 days. OK, so they want to make sure that you have a place set up and that you're residing there. OK. So you select these, box, these boxes. Um, I will be residing in the county that I registered um, by the next election. I have a valid driver's license or ID. So this is another really important thing. And you don't just want an ID just to register to vote. You need this in general. To get a job, right, you need to have an ID. To get on a plane, to, um, to open a bank account. A lot of things in life, you need to have an ID. So whether or not you are, you're like, I don't want to register. Okay, I'm not going to force you. Um, I encourage you to. But having an ID really is part of functioning. Okay, now a driver's license, obviously, you can legally then drive and it counts as an ID. But getting an ID does not mean you can drive. Okay, so it only it's just a way of identifying yourself. And it makes it easier to do a lot of the things that again, come with adulting. Okay, so opening a bank account, you know, when you get a job applying to school, um, scholarships, things like that, you have to provide ID. So most things you need an ID. So it's just a good thing to go ahead and get it. Um, so that you can start to set up those adult like things, opening a bank account, things like that. So make sure you have an ID first, okay, or a driver's license. You have to be a US citizen. And then are you already 18? Or are you are you 17 turning 18? Okay, so you push continue. And then you really you just fill in your information. Okay, so you do need to know like your date of birth, you need to know the last part of your social security number. If you don't know your social security number, memorize it. Okay, because that's a good thing to know. And then you need to have that ID. 
um, number. So driver's license or ID number. All right. And then you just go through, there's a couple different things you fill out and it, it it's really fast. Once you have your information, it goes really fast. Okay. And you can literally do it online. Now, the nice thing about registering is they will literally send the ballots to your residence. So whatever address you put, make sure that that's where you're residing. And then when it's election time, they will send the ballot to your house. So you can go vote in person or you can just fill out the ballot um, that's mailed to you and then mail it back. So it's actually really convenient. You know, when myself and Miss Sierra growing up, when we first registered, but you had to like go in person. And over the last couple of decades, it's gotten so much easier in that they literally just send it to your house. So you, it's, and it's free to mail it back. So um, it really, it reduces those reasons of why people don't vote. I want to encourage you, local elections are almost more important than federal. Federal elections are important. Don't get me wrong. President, the House, the Senate, they're totally important. But it's actually your local elections that impact your life more. Um, your mayor, your city council, your commissioner, they're the ones who help set the stage for your city. How many hospitals are you going to have? What do your parks look like? Um, how does the city run? You know, um, what's legal? What isn't? Um, you know, how the jails run, all those different kinds of things. Emergency services, they're the ones that control all those, local, your schools, they're the ones that control and have a huge influence on those local entities. So I have learned over the years that it's actually more important. It's important to, read, to vote in both. So don't get me wrong, but it is really, if I'm unhappy with something, that's what I need to get down there and vote for because they're the ones who are directly going to impact my day-to-day -day life. So for example, right now we're having special elections in part of Henderson for a city council position because the old member became mayor. So it created a vacancy. So we're actually having a local election right now. And one of the big controversies is there's a plot of land a couple miles from my house. And what is it going to be zoned for? And so it's caused a lot of controversies. Should it be private? Should it be commercial? What kind of commercial? And so this has created a lot of divide and people are voting based on those candidates. So oftentimes it's things you don't really realize, but you're like, no, I don't, I don't want a big strip mall going in and that plot of land, or we need more housing, or you have a certain opinion on how that should be going. All right. And those local elections are how it's done. So any questions on registering to vote? 18 U.S. citizen need to get that ID. Even if you're not going to register to vote, get that ID. If you're not going to get your driver's license, still get an ID. If you're, if you're planning getting a job, going to school, um, getting a bank account, any of those things, you got to have an ID. If you're going to travel, you need to have an ID. So it's just a really good thing to make sure that you get done because it helps you function as an adult. Okay, next thing we're going to go over, let's talk about select services. Okay, so who this applies for and how you do it. So select services is required by law. It's for all men 18 to 25. Okay, so women are not required to register for select services, but men are required. It is federal law. Um, and let's talk about some of the reasons to do it, what, what it makes as a male, what this makes you eligible for, okay? Federal and state jobs. If you plan on applying for any federal or state job, you need to be registered in select services. Any financial aid, federal or state financial aid, they will check to make sure that you've registered in select services. Any federal job training programs. And if you are looking for, if you're an immigrant and you're looking for path to citizenship, this can also then be a part of that path to citizenship, Okay. Um, it's up. So let's talk a little, let's watch this quick video and then I'll answer any questions. Who needs to register? Selected Select service registration is required for virtually all men between the ages of 18 and 25. This includes U.S. citizens, dual nationals, non-citizen immigrants documented and undocumented, and U.S. citizens living abroad. Registration keeps men eligible for many student loans, scholarships, and grants, 2.7 million federal jobs, free federal job training programs under the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, and a streamlined path to U.S. citizenship. Selective service registration ensures fairness, equity, and availability in the event of a national emergency. Learn more about who needs to register at sss.gov. Okay, so the origins of this or the reason that they came up with this was because during World War II, they had a draft. So we went to war and we weren't ready. We didn't have enough soldiers. And so they established a draft to bring in young men of kind of fighting age to go and protect our country. And since then, they've kept this select services so that in case of an emergency, um, in case of a time of full out war where our country is actually sending troops to war, um, you know, as if we saw this during Vietnam and stuff like that, they already have an established list. 
Now, this is not unique to the United States. Many countries have a registry, okay, where again, in case of war, um, they have some list of eligible young men who can be pulled in to go and defend our country. Some countries go even further than that. They actually require military service. So example, Israel, they require all men and women, both, um, to do two years of service in the military. Okay, in defense of the country. So in different jobs and things like that, two years before they can go on to college or other jobs or things like that. So a lot of countries have a system in place somewhere it's required military service or somewhere it's just registry so that in that nation's defense, if needed, they're more prepared. Okay, or ready. Um, at this time, it is only men that are required. Women are not required. There's been a lot of debate if that should change and if it's going to change. So I don't know. But as of now, 2023, it is men, okay, and 18 um, to 25. And again, you if you are hoping to get financial aid, loans, um, any kind of federal job or things like that, they will check to see that you're on this list. So make sure you do it, okay, um, It's because it is required by federal law, all right? So registration is the law, okay, um, and there can be penalty if you are found to not have done that. Um, why do they do that, all right? Um, so that they're registering all men, fairness and equitable for draft if required. Um, the likelihood is unlikely, but it is still important to know that is the root cause or reason for it. Um, and to make sure that people are being drafted just randomly, not based on socioeconomics or um, ethnic or racial background, okay? Part of civic duty, when you live in a country and you're a participant in that country, um, if that country needs defense, it's kind of part of the, the price that we pay, you know? Um, it's stuff in every country has to have some defense or something ready in arms if, you know, in a crisis, if something were to happen, all right? Um, and again, then makes you eligible um, for some of the other things that were listed. Okay, so in order to register, you could do it online. Um, the link is right here. And you literally just click register. And like registering to vote, it takes about five, 10 minutes. It's it's a very quick um, process, okay? So if that is something you haven't done and you've turned 18, um, then I would get that done. Um, it doesn't take very much time, um, but it is required, okay? Again, men 18 to 25. Any questions on this? I wouldn't stress out about it, all right? The likelihood of us going to war and things like that is that this has been going on for decades, all right? So if you talk to your parents, if you talk to your dad, they most likely, um, if they were born and raised in this country, they most likely then did the select services, all right? So and stuff. So it is, it's is—it's been going on for a long time. It's not a new thing. Okay. We're just going to spend a couple of minutes. I wanted to get our notebook started just so that we can save some time tomorrow because I have a lot to go over tomorrow. So if we go back into module 10, we're just going to set up our state and local government notebook. We're going to do the essential question and vocab really quick. And then I'll give you some time to work on the Everfies that were due yesterday. And if you have any questions, then I can help you. All right. So please go ahead and go to module 10, local state government, and um, click on the notebook. And then go ahead and launch it. Once you've launched it, please rename it, save it, and make it shareable. Okay, so that um, you can find it for tomorrow because, well, again, we'll just introduce it today and then we'll work on it more tomorrow. And then that way it's shareable when you submit it. That way I can open it and I can grade it. And then once you have that open, then we're going to jump back over into Canvas. We're going to go to the next page and we're going to launch the course arc. Okay, so launch the course arc. Push that blue tab, and you're going to go to the, in, the overview page. So we need to have the course arc open, ready to go, and your notebook open, ready to go. By the way, this is our last notebook for the year. How exciting is that? Woo, woo. All right. So give me a celebration emoji. Yay. Okay. Or clapping when you have both open, your course arc and your notebook. Last ones for the year. I know. We're so sad. We're going to cry. <laughs> So you got both open, ready to go. I'll give about another 30 seconds. And like I said, we're just going to do the first part. I just want to get it set up and introduced so that tomorrow there's some graphs and more charts and things we have to do. So it'll be a little bit more time intensive. So I want to just make sure that we've got a little bit more time.
Okay. All right. So going in to the course arc. All right. It gives us our standards. We'll go over these more specifically tomorrow, but basically we're going to be focusing on Nevada. So what makes Nevada unique? Um, how our constitution, how the government works and how that really works with the local governments, you know, going all the way down to city level. So the mayors, the, the commissioners and things like that. OK. And how it differs from federal government. OK, on the introduction page, um, our central question, how does Nevada state government, how is it different from federal government? And like I said, tomorrow we're really going to get into that. All right, so there's the essential question. Go ahead and copy and paste and put that there in number one. I'll give you a minute. So copy and paste and put that over into your notebook, please. All right, so once we've got that done, we're gonna go back over in and let's take a look at the vocab, all right? So what are five key vocab words? All right, so our first one is repeal. So this is the ability, just like at federal level where things can be changed or debated, um, at state level too, there is the ability to revise or to repeal laws, okay? Which means to undo them, to get rid of them, all right? There's a process for that, but just because something becomes law doesn't mean it can't be changed, okay? Township. So township are counties are generally divided up into townships to so like Las Vegas. So for example, we have Las Vegas, Henderson, North Las Vegas, Boulder City. These are all considered townships, cities, towns. Municipality. So in order to be a township or be your own kind of separate entity, you have to have a local government. So for example, in Henderson, we have a mayor, we have a, a city commissioner, we have a city council, we have our own jail, we have our own police force, we have our own uh, hospitals. A lot of townships or municipalities will often have their own school districts on um, Clark County is very large, so we have it county-wise. But so like Las Vegas, same thing, own mayor, own commissioner, own city council, own hospitals, own jail, own police force. So they have that government and then responses that function underneath them, and they are responsible. So for example, if you commit a crime in Las Vegas, then you would be arrested in Vegas and you would go to jail in Vegas, even if you lived in Henderson, okay, because of the municipality, okay, or that separation. And for example, they there can be differences even between cities, like um, jaywalking, maybe in Las Vegas, um, it's allowed and not that it's allowed, but they can't arrest you for it. Here in Henderson, they can ticket you for it. So they're even across cities, sometimes the laws will be different um, and stuff like that. So and the municipalities um, are in charge of that and kind of um, dictating that down. Okay. Welfare. So states tend to have public assistance programs. So not all welfare just comes from federal. States will have programs, immunization, hospital programs, awareness programs, or things to help um, low-income families. And then zoning. So cities are responsible for zoning their land. So is it going to be commercial? Is it going to be private? Is it going to be a strip mall? Is it going to be private homes? Is it going to be a park? And the goal of the municipalities, and part of this is the reason like city councils and things like that, they are responsible for making sure that as cities expand that you have those needs met. Do we have enough individual housing? Do we need more apartments? Do we need um, Section 8? Do we need a hospital? Do we need a park? Do we need a grocery store? Do we need those amenities as we expand and making sure that you have the right balance of private and commercial uh, zoning and residence? Okay, so we go down here, let's do the matching. State and local government have the ability to blank laws just as the national government. So that would be repeal, change, or undo. And we'll check it as we go. So do your matching, okay? Not all counties have a division um, with corporate powers like a township. So like Las Vegas is a township, North Las Vegas, Boulder City, Henderson. So even though North Las Vegas, Vegas, and Henderson are all basically connected, it's hard to tell when one starts and one begins, they are separate entities. Okay, and that is due to the city or town corporate status and local government having the municipality. So having your own mayor, your own city council, your own commissioner, your own emergency response. Those on blank receive government assistance to assure, ensure their economic and social well-being. So welfare, check this as we're going. 
And Nevada has some of the largest federal government zoning for use of land. And that is true. Over 75% of Nevada is actually um, controlled by, uh, is considered federal land. And we'll talk about that tomorrow. Why is that? Why is Nevada, why is so much of Nevada federally run? Okay. Um, compared to other states, we are, we are much more compared to other states. Okay. Let's do our chart. So we'll do repeal first. Okay. Why isn't this letting me highlight? Here we go. Okay, so we'll do repeal. So on one side, you're going to put the definition. The other side, you'll put in your own words definition, okay, which I'll help you out with. So repeal, state or local government has the ability to repeal laws, and then state or local government can revoke. So that second part is going to be, is going to come over here. So it looks like one blah, but make sure that you're taking that second part and you're putting it under the your definition part, okay? All right, township, with the, the subdivision of counties into cities. And cities isn't just where people live. So like Henderson, for example, extends farther than where the buildings are. They have more land than that. Same with Las Vegas, same with North Las Vegas. Because as expansion happens and they zone those areas um, for the cities to expand. Okay. Next, municipality. So in order to be a town, you have to have your own local government. All right. So again, a mayor commissioner, city council, emergency response, so fire department, um, police, jail, uh, do, you know, court systems and stuff. And so each um, each municipality will have their own functions. And there will be differences between them. For the most part, often it's the same, but there could be differences of how one law is enforced versus another or what's prosecuted or what isn't. Welfare, so receiving assistance, and it doesn't just come from federal level. You can also get that from state level. And then zoning, how land is zoned, and this can happen within towns. Um, you know, what's private, what's going to be commercial, which would be like businesses, but also what is state land and what is city land and what is federal land. And we have a lot of uh, land in, in uh, Nevada that is federally run and we'll what we'll talk about that tomorrow specifically all right so go ahead and get those copy and pasted over that's all we're going to do in the notebook today i just wanted to get it started and then tomorrow we'll work number three through number seven and if you look at it a little bit they're they're pretty extensive there's some charts and things we're gonna have to fill in so that's part of the reason i wanted to get the notebook started today to make sure that because we will be moving tomorrow we have a lot of material tomorrow okay give me any emoji let me know that you have one and two done in your notebook Okay, any, any emoji, I don't care. But let me know that you got one and two done in your notebook. Awesome. When you're done with that, go ahead, feel free to close it. Make sure you saved it though on your Google Drive so you can open it tomorrow. We're going to jump right in tomorrow. Okay, so make sure that you save it so that you can get right to it tomorrow. Okay, so in your government folder on the Google Drive. Okay. With the remainder of the period, we are going to talk about EverFi. So there were two EverFi lessons that were due yesterday. There was the, um, these two. There was the keys to investment in the investment game. Okay, and this is going to round out marketplace for us. Okay, so this is where 50 points, 25 points each. So this is a lot of summative points. Um, I want to make sure that you are taking screenshots when you finish them and that the screenshot that you're including all the information that needs to be there. All right. So let's review this really quick. I've been over this a bunch, but I'm still having a lot of people submit them and not showing the right information, which means I can't give you a grade. Okay. So when you complete EverFi, I need the entire screen. So a lot of you are cutting it off at Marketplace right here. So here's why. I need to see your name. I need to see the score, but I have to see the name of the assignment. And in a lot of these, see how it just says marketplace? It doesn't actually tell me the name of the assignment. The name of the assignment is right there. Okay? So when you do a screenshot, don't edit it. Just give me the entire screen. If you don't want me to see one of your tabs, then close it before you do a screenshot. All right? So please, I had somebody say that to me. They're like, well, I don't want you to see. I'm like, then close it. I'm not forcing you to have that open. If you're worried about your privacy, then close it. So I need the entire thing. I need to be able to see the name of the assignment, your grade, and your name, okay? Because um, um, I've had people say they're having a hard time. So if you just tell me which one you need, that's during this 20 minutes today, I will go and look it up 
because we're in class. Um, it's a, so when you go into Everfy, there's like a progress or grade tab where you should be able to scroll and like see your grades and what you've done. Um, but I can't see it. I can see like everyone's grades on my end. I don't know. I don't know exactly where the tab is. Um, Joycelyn, but if you tell me which one you, you need, I can go look it up and I'll put it in during class. Okay. So I'll save you some time. So if you've already completed it. Yeah. So just let me know in the chat. Okay. So with the next 20 minutes, 19 minutes till we get out for lunch. Um, I want you to work on these two EverFi assignments, okay? So key to investment marketplace, okay? If you've already done them, then go and check your score and make sure that I didn't say there was an issue with the screenshot. If there was an issue with the screenshot, let me know in the chat. And during this class, I won't do this in general, but during this class, I will go look it up and I'll put it in the grade book because it takes me time. I have to jump back and forth and it's extra work on my part, but I'm, I'm happy to do it right now. Okay, not in general. So don't email me and expect me to do it. Going forward, make sure your entire screenshot and check it before you close it. Okay, check it and make sure all this is in there. I just that the entire page is there so I can see all the information. Okay, so we got about 18 minutes work on the Everfi marketplace, um, keto investment and investment game. Get those submitted. Make sure that your screenshot is the entire screen so I can see name, name of the assignment, and the score. Or if you already turned it in, go back and double check. And if I ask you to resubmit, then let me know really quick and I can, um, I'll go look up the score while we're here in class. I'm not going to do it later, but I will do it now. Okay, I will go look up those three. All right, let me know if you have questions, but use this time, get started and get some of these done, okay?
Let me know if you have any questions or if you got one of those resubmit because I can't see it, um, then let me know in the chat real quick and I can look it up while we're in class and get it done. All right. But in the future, like, yeah, you bet. So, but in the future, like, please make sure that those screenshots are the entire screen. Okay. Cause I can't on a daily basis, go back and forth and look them up. That would take hours. Okay. But I can do it in class right now. So if you've got one that you need me to look up, you've been having a hard time with your screenshots, let me know and I can get it done.
So about five minutes, keep working. Or if you have any questions, let me know or anything I can assist with. If you checked your grade on these two EverFi assignments and it shows half credit and it says, please re resubmit, let me know. And during class, I can go look up the score real quick. Okay. I'm not doing it after class. It's your responsibility to submit the screenshot that has all the information I need. All right. But if you want me to do it real quick during class, I can do it. Kind of an amnesty thing. All right, I hope that um, you have been able to get started on the EverFi, maybe get one of them done. If you're in the middle of one, pause it. And I would say during lunch, finish it up. You know, don't close the tab, keep it open, get that done. All right, so, um, and stuff. And then get make sure that your screenshot, that you have the score, your name, and that tab. So just do the entire screen and you should be good, okay? So we reviewed really quick, EverFi, Keys Investment, Investment Game. This is gonna wrap up Marketplace. So these are the last two in Marketplace. And then we'll be moving on to Money Moves and Financial Literacy, okay? So we'll be in the other programs in EverFi. Um, reviewed register to vote requirement, what select services is, how you register, who's required to do that. And then we just started the um, notebook today. Tomorrow we'll get into a lot more about state local government. So we just kind of got that set up. So it'll save us a little bit of time for tomorrow. All right. So uh, I thought this was funny, Mr. Mackey. All right. You're all muted. <laughs> all right. But you're muted. So.
All right. So have a wonderful day. I will see you tomorrow and be ready. We're going to jump in and we will do module 10 lesson one notebook, our last notebook of the year. Yay. All right. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you, Jocelyn. Thank you, Ashley. Have a good day. Thank you, Owen. Bye. Bye, Tyreek. Bye, Addison. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Have a good day. I'll see you tomorrow.